Hello again. I know it's been a really, really long time, but I've got a good excuse. Um, I know that we're sort of obsessed with the weather in, in Britain and in the UK in general, but I think everybody will agree with me that if we took a big long list of weather conditions, uh, ranging from sort of everything, uh, be it flooding, snowing, fog, snow, uh, anything and you took away clear sky and you took away sunshine then the rest of it we've had in Britain over the last you know several months uh, high winds roofs blowing off houses flooding all sorts I don't know what's going on but what it means is that not a lot of people have actually been able to do very much astronomy at all but anyway today I'm going to talk about this now this is the TS uh, telescope service 65 quad um, it's a lovely little scope and I've had mine for about 12 months now so I thought it was time that I, uh, I did a video on it. Uh, because it's a quad it's primarily aimed at people who are into imaging because it's corrected you don't need any field flatteners or anything. Uh, what I will do firstly though is I'm going to talk about the two things that I don't like about this scope and to be honest there are only two. Um, the first thing is that although it comes with some really nice CNC style uh, rings on it, what it doesn't come with is a dovetail. I mean, this is basically how the scope comes. The lack of finder is totally acceptable. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. But the, the lack of a dovetail, I, I'm just, I don't know. I, I just thought it was lacking on telescope services part, to be honest. And... You can imagine that you know some guy orders one of these and he's got his mount there and it all arrives it's christmas day or it's his birthday and he, he, he gets his scope out of his box and his mount and oh dear he can't fit the two together just for the sake of a you know um a dovetail and i, I don't know i just I, it didn't impress me it's, it's just something that i didn't like and i think ts should include a dovetail uh, a small vixen dovetail in this scope in the package the second thing that i don't like is although this cap the lens cap is actually a really nice quality aluminium lens cap um it's too loose uh on mine i i could actually um hold it up like this and the cap would fall down um this this actual one that I've got in my hands is one that those nice people at TS loaned me because it's it's actually a faulty one, and they've said that I can take it to pieces, which is what I'm going to do in um, in a, in part two of this video. But just to demonstrate with this with this cap, um, there is a retractable dew shield on these scopes. So let's just say that you've been doing your imaging for the night like so, and you you come to your packing up and you put your cap on and then you retract your dew shield. Oh dear, now it's fallen in the mud, it's got dirt and grit on it and I don't want to put it back on my scope now so what am I going to do? To be honest I'd much rather see a nice tighter fitting plastic um, lens cap on these than this aluminium one. What I actually did with mine is I took some self adhesive flocking and just put an extra little strip in there. That's actually how it grips at the moment, there is like a self adhesive flocking in there. I put some extra on to just make it a, a tighter fit. Now, another thing about these, uh, the TS65, it's it's got some notoriety, notori however you say it, notoriety. But, notoriety, that'll be the one. Right, um, the thing is that when it first came out, this scope, it got quite a lot of bad press uh, because it was giving um, pinched optic effects in low temperatures. That's all been cured, but the thing is, um, with the internet, the internet's timeless, and internet reviews can be timeless sometimes, which means that even at this stage now, if you look for reviews on, on this particular scope, you're going to turn up the bad views, you know, the ones that say, oh, it was bloody awful it, when it got to a certain temperature, uh, my stars were misshaped, and this was wrong with it. I can assure you that that's no longer the case. It was um, there was well, there was a few reasons for the for the errors that I won't even go into. But um, needless to say, they have now been addressed by TS. They got addressed a long time ago. It was all fixed, and these telescopes, take my word for it, are absolutely stunning. So let's just have a, a quick look over it. Um, as I said, it's a sixty-five millimeter uh, quad. Uh, the dew shield on it is retractable, and it has a small locking screw on there just to lock that dew shield in place. Now that is a small point that I'm actually very happy with, because um, 
I have come across a few scopes with retractable dew shields that don't have that and the the dew shield will actually as the scope tilted will fall down I've seen it mostly on carbon fiber models and carbon fiber obviously being quite a sort of polished shiny slippery plastic uh, type material you know you're gonna get that even more um, but like I say it is something that I've seen um, the rings on it are very very nice they're nice quality the sort of a, a CNC style as I said before the focuser on these now on this one as I said those nice people at telescope service sent me this one that's actually a faulty one my own one is um, is here uh, his brother but um, <coughs> The focuser on this one's actually faulty, so whatever you see as I start to play with the focuser on this, don't take it for granted because that's what the fault is on this particular one. I, I, the the focusers are actually absolutely silky smooth. This one just feels like it's had a bag of rock thrown into it. Um, it's a rack and pinion focuser, and you can just see uh, a section of it there. Um, it's a very very fine mesh that's on those and I would suggest um, that you keep in your little box of bits uh, a stiff toothbrush and just you know every now and again when you when you're doing your little bit of servicing on on your various scopes and bits and pieces just give that a brushing out just to make sure that you've got no debris and um, you know any any grit in there um, but it's a two-speed focuser um, it is just lovely and silky smooth another good point is that it's actually rotatable so that you can get you can frame your your subject up quite nicely now I know with uh, with these rotators a few people have had issues on on different models where you they get image shift or it loses focus when they rotate it and I have to say with this one I haven't noticed that but what there is is as well as the locking screw there are actually two brass bushes so they're actually at thirds on the rotating mechanism and you can with a screwdriver just very finely adjust those two so that when combined with the lock you do get a very very smooth rotation with no play in it whatsoever and it, it, it's like anything else with this scope it just everything that I, I sort of played about with it um, impressed me um, now it comes with a 1.25 adapter in there like so what I found is that I needed a spacer like this one and they're just you know readily available from most places but um, I just find then that I don't have to wind the focus around I don't like with refractors especially I'm, I'm not fond of where you have to wind the the focus around a good way I just think it it just I get the feeling that you're gonna get some 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 sloppiness there somewhere so I, like I say I put that spacer on there um, what else can I tell you about it I absolutely love it um, mine I'm, I'm really really happy with it there is a finder shoe on there you don't get a finder with it but um, a normal skywatcher finder will fit on there so if you've got yourself a finder guider or made yourself a finder guider at some point with a, with a skywatcher 9b50 finder that'll fit on there absolutely fine uh, the sharp eyed of you may have noticed that there is no screw on this one to hold the finder in they actually the, the screws come in a little separate bag um, in the case when you when you get these in fact they even give you two screws to fit the dovetail that you don't get on the on the bottom of the of the rings there uh, the shaft of the focuser itself is also quite nicely graduated like so and overall it's just a really really nice scope I love it to bits it's very very heavy um, for the size of it um, and you know it, all I can say is really that um, I didn't think that something so small would give me so much pleasure but <laughs> What I'll do next is I'll show you a, a, an image that I've taken with the with this scope and my QHY8L camera, um, and it takes lovely wide field images, which is what I wanted. Um, I like to see sometimes some perspective in in images. I'm I'm not a great big fan of these these tight up galaxies that I know they that they've got lots of detail and colouring and stuff, but. Sometimes I like to look at an image and, 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 you know, I mean, we know that space is like huge and vast and, and sometimes 
a nice wide image just just sort of it, it, it enhances that and it, it gives you some some idea of sort of the the, the true scale of, of where we live um, and that's what I wanted it for really so do I recommend it absolutely yes without a doubt and um, like I say I'm just really really happy with it um, I know there are several people that have also recommended them too and they've been delighted with them as well. Um, now, for telescope service, the main agent in the UK is Modern Astronomy and I will put the link up there for Modern Astronomy. As I said, there is going to be a part two of this video where I'm going to take this uh, completely to pieces. Number one, because I like to take things to pieces. But number two, I will also explain about the pinched optics and show you a, a, a lens cell and actually show you the corrector in this one as well. And also show you how to correct pinched optics and, and basically explain how it can happen. And it's, it's not actually as complicated or as bad as some people might think. So what we'll do now is I'll just go on to an image uh, that I've taken with it and you can judge for yourself. Okay, there it is. Uh, as you can see, it's the Whirlpool Galaxy, and it's most certainly it's wide field. Uh, if you look to the edges of the of the frame, there's no sign of any misshapen stars. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of a tracking error that again is on my part. Uh, there's a very very slight bit of graduation and noise in there that again is just down to me. Uh, but we'll just zoom in and have an even closer look at it. And you'll be able to see from that that you know it, the image quality is there it's just very very nice and I do love this scope so there it is um, like I said very very highly recommended and I'm just delighted with mine like I said I've had it for 12 months and I'm just really really happy with it uh, as I said before uh, you'd be surprised that um, such a small thing can give so much pleasure and that's it for this one, apart from obviously the part two where I'm going to take this to pieces. So just watch out for that one. And once again, thanks for watching.